Okay, in this tutorial we're going to talk about UV surfaces having to do with cylinders. This is going to be a little bit more complicated than spheres. And in this case we're going to make a can. A can of Pepsi, how about? Or Coke, whatever you want to make. Uh, but it will look relatively realistic. And we will want to have a surface wrapped around the can, but also a surface on the top and bottom of the can, which is going to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so here we are in Modeler, and we're going to start with a disk. So if we go to Create Mode, we're going to go to Disk, and I'm just going to draw a disk right like that, and stretch it out to make it a cylinder. And I'm just going to approximate the size of a can. And uh, go to my numeric pad here, and I'm going to make the radius three by three by three. Now in this case, of course, the uh, dimension there will be stretched out once again. So we have there a cylinder, you know, a very plain looking cylinder, but a cylinder nonetheless. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is to actually take it apart in some ways because in order to do a custom UV surface, we have to have the surfaces separated. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into polygon mode and we're going to select everything. And we're going, going, we're going to detail, detail area. We're going to hit this little button here called unweld. What this is going to do is it's going to remove the surfaces from each other. And if I were to deselect everything and then select, let's say, just this top polygon, I go to Modify Move, I'll be able to lift it free. So if you see, you look up there, you can see it's taken right out of that cylinder, and it controls Z that. And that normally wouldn't happen, but that's what we're going to do here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create some features in that top and bottom of the can. Because I'm not satisfied with a can that's got a flat top, we all know they don't have them at least not uh, this day and age. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this again and this time we're going to go in on that a little bit. And we're going to make the top of that can. So I'm going to go into multiply bevel and I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. Not much. Right click, left click, bring it up a little bit more. Right click, left click and bring it in some, right click, left click, and down. Cans oftentimes have that lip. Right click, left click, up some more, right click, left click, and then we're going to give it kind of a slope. Most cans kind of have a slope upward a little bit, and that's probably good enough. So I'm gonna turn off bevel, and I'm gonna release that, and that will be the top of the can. Now we're not actually putting the little uh, punch tab in there because uh, the UV mapping will take care of that. Uh, but this should be convincing at least at a distance. And then if we go to the bottom here, I'm going to select this one. And I'm going to bevel that as well. And if I take it down here a little bit, most cans do that. Right click, left click. And there's a little bit of a gap there. Right click, left click. And then we come back up. Right click, left click. And most cans that I have seen kind of have almost like a dome on the bottom. They kind of dome upward. So we'll, uh, we'll simulate that. Yeah, maybe not perfectly, but good enough. Okay, so then this is the bottom of my can. It doesn't look that bad. Okay, so now that we've got the can crafted so that it's basically all it has to be, now we're going to create the UV map. And uh, rather than just do a sphere, we're going to do this a little bit differently. First of all, we're going to go up here to where it says top. We're going to change this viewpoint. All the way to the bottom of this, we've got UV texture. When we do that, we get this funny looking little grid. And I'm going to zoom in on that. And this is a place to put shapes 
that you can make a UV texture out of. Now there's no real easy way to describe that besides doing it. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the shape of those can ends. So we're in polygon mode. I'm going to draw a box around those polygons. Everything, everything but the can itself. Then I'm going to hold down the shift key and draw a box around those polygons. So now we've selected only the can ends. And then we're going to go down here to our surface. Our, we're going to go down here to our texture creator. And we're going to go and make a new texture. And I'm going to call this can. And um, basically in this case, and this is important, I'm going to keep that planar because we're really looking at those cans as if they're almost flat. And I'm going to stick in the Y axis and if I hit create, look what happens. It creates the shape of that can. So it covers the whole thing, which is too big. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to modify and going to size that down because we want to fit every aspect of this can on that grid. So, if I size it down, that's actually going to be good enough. And you might say, well, there's only one of those. Well, that's because they're right on top of each other. So I'm going to turn off size for a minute. And that's going to be the top of the can. So the bottom of the can, or that's going to be the top of the can, so I will deselect the top of the can here. And then I'll hit the Move tab and just move that on over. So we've got in the UV map, the top of the can, the bottom of the can. And then I will deselect that. OK, so the, the can itself, we're going to treat a little bit differently. So if I pass the mouse over these points, just hold, clicking down and scribbing all the way through them, I get all the cylinder parts of the can. And I'm going to change that from planar to cylindrical. And I'm just going to hit create. And when I do, I get this thing that looks like monkey bars. What that is, is the, the actual cylinder stretched out. It's cylindrical, so it understands what that is. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to size that down a little bit so that it fits on the grid here. And then I'm just going to move it upward. I'm going to size it down a little bit more. And you can take some liberties with these. And you'll see why in a minute. And then I'm going to stretch that to accommodate all that space. And so that will be our UV. And then I can turn this off. And go ahead and deselect these. And then just deselect all that. Okay, and so there's a very important step here. We have to put this can back together now that we've done that. And if we forget to do it, what will happen is it will act like it has more than one surface and you won't be able to apply smoothing to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything. And I'm going to go back to detail. And I'm going to hit Merge Points, which is right near where Unweld was. And I'm just going to do it automatically. And if you can see down here, 144 points eliminated. And what it did was it put the can back together. So if we wanted to prove that, I could select these polygons and then go to Modify, Move. And they're stuck in place once again. So now this is one object. OK, so at this point, what we've got to do is make the actual UV image. And so this is where it gets really interesting. So we're going to go up to this, this uh, panel up here. And notice that most of these uh, windows have that little bitty corner there. So we're going to hit that corner here. And that basically puts this full screen. And then I'm going to magnify it so that we're seeing it full screen. 
And now you have the opportunity to do something I bet you've never done. If you look on your keyboard right next to the F12 button, usually it's uh, right above the numbers, you're going to see a button that says Print Screen. I bet you've never pressed that button before, many of you. So go ahead and hit that button and it will do absolutely nothing. So then we're going to go to Photoshop. Okay, so if we're here in Photoshop, we've got a nice empty window here and all we're going to do is to make a new file. File New and then basically just hit OK. Don't bother changing any of that. And you'll get and you'll get a nice empty window. And then all you're going to do is hit Control V or Edit Paste and you will get a copy of your desktop. That's what happened when you hit Print Screen. And then all you're going to do is go to the Marquee Tool and select nothing but that grid pattern and then go to image and crop and you've got a map of your UV surface. Then what we're going to do is we're going to open another file which we found earlier and that is this and you can get these anywhere on the internet these are you're just, just uh, Google UV shapes and then whatever you want. In this particular case, this is a UV image of a Pepsi can. Probably not the perfect Pepsi can, but it will do. And so, what we have here is a, a, a representation of the top and bottom of the can. And so, I'm going to take my marquee and I'm going to highlight just that Pepsi. And I'm going to make sure that I'm cropping it so that I'm not getting anything but the blue there. And then I'm just going to do an edit copy. And I'm going to go back to this document and edit paste. And there it is. So then I'm going to move that by using the move tool. But it's too big. So we have to scale it down a bit. So if I go to edit transform and I choose scale, you'll see that if I hold down the shift key I can scale that down. And the nice thing about this is you don't even have to keep the proportions. In fact you can't. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch it to, to exactly fit that UV surface. I can overlap it by a little bit but that should be good. And then I hit the enter key and release it and there it is. Okay, so for these two, we go to this again. And this time, I'm going to go to my marquee tool and I'm going to hold the button down. I'm going to choose the ellipse shape and tap on the screen to release that. And I'm going to draw an ellipse. And this is a little bit more challenging. I'm going to draw an ellipse around that upper part of the cylinder. And then I'm going to move it so that it's pretty much capture that cylinder. Then I'm going to edit copy. I'm going to go over here, control V or edit paste. It's going to create another layer with that cylinder on it. And I'm going to move that to where I know the top of the can is. Now it's a little bit too big. So I'm going to go to edit transform scale again. And in this case just uh, scale it down a little bit, position it, and then just stretch that out so that the actual cylinder head covers what it's supposed to, at least pretty closely. And hit enter, and you're done. Then finally, all we're going to do is take, go back to uh, ellipse, and just move that ellipse up to this one. Edit copy, edit paste, and edit transform and scale. And just make that 
fit the shape. And we're done. This is a UV mat. So all we got to do is save it. And if you just arbitrarily save it, it'll try to save it as a Photoshop document. We need that as a JPEG. Because I know for a fact that the program will accept JPEGs. And I'm going to call that can underscore UV. And save. And I'm going to save it at maximum quality, not that I have to. So now if we go back to Modeler, we can go ahead and put this back down where it was. And we don't actually need this anymore, so we can set this back to top if we were going to do anything else. And then I'm going to save this object, which I probably should have done earlier. And I'm going to call that Can. And then I'm going to go ahead and send that to Layout. So Layout now has the Can. And I'm going to go into Surface Editor. And uh, right now the Can is upside down, but we'll get to that in a minute. And I'm going to turn on smoothing, so we have a smooth can. And then I'm going to go to my texture. And instead of planar, I'm going to select UV. And for my UV map, I'm going to choose can, which is the one we made. And I'm going to load the image that corresponds to that, which would be can underscore UV. And there it is. So we got our Pepsi can. And let's see how accurate it is. If I go to Modify, Rotate, if we look at the top of the can, there's the top of the can. I guess it wasn't upside down. And if you look at the bottom of the can, there's the bottom of the can. And there it is. How about that? And we're going to go into our uh, Surface Editor. And we're going to give it some specularity because usually when you have a can, you have, um, it's aluminum, so you don't have any glossiness, you don't have any reflection, but you have specularity. So as you can see, if you move that around a little bit, it catches the light pretty much like an aluminum can would. I'm going to go back here with my Pepsi can and I am going to select all of these polygons. I'm going to copy them. Then I'm going to go to the next layer over and I'm going to paste them in. And I'm going to make this version of it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to size it down very, very little. Maybe, yeah, let's say that much. And so there's a can within a can. Turn off size. I'm going to go here, put this in the background. I'm going to go to Construct, Boolean, Subtract. And so what have I done by doing that? I have turned that can hollow. And as you can see in, in layout, it hasn't made a difference. So then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go in on the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a disk. I'm going to put that in another layer. I'm going to create a disk like so. And it's probably going to be a little bit more narrow. And I want to line that up with this. And in this particular case, they've screwed me over a little bit the way they did the pop top tab because that's a can of peaches, that's not a, a Pepsi can. But let's play along. Let's put it right over there and hope that nobody notices. Now let's say we like it like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch that out. Construct, Boolean, Subtract. And there it is. Let me get rid of this. And we now have a hollow can. 
So if we were to look at this, now the, uh, the punch hole didn't work out all that well, but you can see that the can is hollow. Now because of the nature of the shape, it didn't come out all that well, but uh, the idea is there. Okay, and uh, lastly, just so you know, if you wanted to change that to a different brand, let's say that you're not a Pepsi person, you want Coke, you can just go back here to Photoshop. And you can take your Coca-Cola and basically highlight that and copy it and go back here and paste it in and you got your coke and let's say we put that up there and scale it so you got your coke and we'll save this one, save it as, we'll go to our JPEG, and our UV can 2. And then, if we're back here, and we go into our surface editor, and we go back here, we just load a different image. And everything is identical except for the brand. So this is a way you could make multiple cans of the same thing. You could do soup cans. You can do anything you want. And of course, if you're more careful, you can put a nice better hole in there. But the idea is pretty much the same.